Power Feeds 101. First step, clean it. It's pretty gross. Got some oil leaking. But get all the grunge off before disassembly. Acetone is your friend. There's normally a small key that goes in here to hold the handle in place. They're a pain in the ass and they get lost a lot. I like this customer's solution. You can see the oil running down from the cover. Obviously the gasket is shot, so we'll take care of that too. Next problem is ground is broken off of the power plug, so we'll put a new one on. All right, next up is draining the oil, whatever's left, if there is even any in there. Sometimes, as in this case, the sight glass gets so stained that it looks like there's oil in there, and customers don't put oil in. We'll see how much is left in this one. This one will get a new sight glass, too. So I'll keep it tilted to one side with a little block under there, take out the drain plug, then tip it over and drain it into a little cup. All right, well, there's all the oil that came out. So next up is we take off the cover and see what's left of the insides. 6F has a detent pin behind the cover here that holds the handle in whichever position you put it in. The fact that it's not springed out here yet tells me that they probably added some silicone sealer around this. We will see. Well, it doesn't look like there's a gasket at all. There should be a paper gasket here. Looks like they used silicone sealer. What a surprise. Okay, let's dive in. Well, surprisingly, I don't see any ground metal inside. It looks pretty clean in there. Ring gear seems to be in good shape. So, stuff this with some rag, soak up all the extra oil, and uh, then we'll put it back together, run it, and see what it sounds like. Well, not sure what this stuff they put on here is, but it's not silicone. It sort of feels like plastic, and the uh, scraper doesn't take it off very easily. Fortunately, we have a tool for that. Be back in a few. Having the right tool is wonderful. All right, let's see what happens. Power on, we got a light. Let's turn the speed down so it don't jump. Let's go left. Speed up. And we got absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. How about Rapid? Nothing on Rapid either. There should be a boot over that. Should be a boot over this. We'll replace those too. But we got zip. Chances are, because this was leaking, that oil got inside the controls and coated everything. So the next step would be to kill the power, unplug it, and dive into the electricals. So typically, these things have these cap head screws. There should be six of them. Here we got a, a little bit different one. This one's missing. Two more down here, so we'll get another one for there and replace that one. Faceplate looks pretty beat up. If I can't get it clean, we'll replace that too. So this has been repaired once before. This is a new board. Uh, original boards mount to these four screws here and sat upside down inside the case. So, but this is nice because this comes with a quick disconnect. So I can just take that off, get it out of the way. And you got two wire nuts for the input power. So we'll pull them off and have better access to the insides. Got some oil on the back of the control panel. Not too bad by the forward and reverse switches. When we pull the fuse out. This is interesting. There is actually oil inside the fuse. 
So I'm going to need to get in there with some contact cleaner and wash that out. All right, so first thing I'll do is I'll get down in there with uh, something. I don't have any Q-tips. Note to self, put Q-tips in the toolbox. But we'll clean it out with this after I make a homemade Q-tip from a rag and, oh, I don't know, a screwdriver or something. So this could explain why the right isn't working. The switch is completely loose in there. And when you turn the handle to that side, it won't actuate the switch because the switch isn't stationary, so the plunger won't push. And uh, it doesn't explain why the right, left side doesn't work, but there's all kinds of grunge on this. And I'll bet you these things are full of oil. So we'll have to see if I can take them apart, maybe hit them with some contact cleaner, and then put it back together and see if that helps. So first thing is take a photograph of that so that we know where the colors go. And just in case, we also do a wiring diagram that indicates the colors. I also like to put a couple of zip ties on here. Group the two halves. So you got right side, left side. That one points right. That one points left. Just a little extra insurance. Okay, now that all the wires are disconnected, I'm going to take these two screws out here and separate the wiring box from the gearbox and have better access to the switch panel. Alright, so there we are. It's quite a mess in there. Oil everywhere. Uh, these three screws hold the switch panel in. There's standoffs behind them to keep it up off the, the base. So I'll pull them out and uh, check the switches with a meter and see if they're working. So the black is on the common. Normally closed is up top here, and that appears to be working. Normally open there. That works. Let's see if normally closed goes off, and it does. So this switch is good. This is the one that was loose, so it probably just needed to be adjusted. So let's check the other switch. So we know what switch goes where. Witness mark, little yellow dot. So we know that this switch goes in that position. We won't put anything on that one. So we know that one stays there. Well, I don't know if you can hear, but this switch is acting sluggish. But from the noise of the milling machine, you might not be able to hear the clicks. Hear that little delay when I let go, push it in, and let go. And there's a little delay. I'll shoot some contact cleaner in there and see if it helps. Well, that actually helped. I don't know if you can hear it, but no more delay. So let's test this switch. Okay, so again, black is on the common, normally closed on top. I'm holding the switch in and it's not making contact, which is correct. Let it go and it makes contact. That's fine. Let's check the normally open side. That should be off right now. So that one is also working correctly. All right, let's get them back in aligned. Oh, by the way, see these two plungers in here? What are activated by this shaft? Uh, they're all gummed up with some oil, so I'll pull them out, hit them with contact cleaner, and put them back in. They should slide freely, but they're kind of stiff. So this is how they should be. They should fall right out when you turn them upside down like that. They weren't doing that before. All right, so to calibrate the switches, I got the handle temporarily installed again in a neutral position. All right. The bottom screws here are fairly tight. This one is a little bit snug. So we push it in until we hear on the ohm meter that we have continuity. So right there. So now what we're going to do is back off a hair until that stops. And then we'll lock that screw in. Okay, so there we go. So, let me go to the right. Switch actuates. When you come to neutral position, switch deactivates. Ah, okay. We got to back off a of hair. See, this is why we do this. 
Okay, back in a minute. All right, so there we are. Contact, no contact. Contact, no contact. All right, we're good there. Then we do the other switch, same thing. All right, and we have the other switch. On, off, on, off. Possibly check the uh, normally closed. So that's closed and it opens. So we're good, switches are adjusted properly. All right, we're wired back up. Everything's sitting here temporary. We're plugged in, power on. We got a light, just make sure we're down on a low speed. Still, we got zip. Not in that direction. And not in that direction. So, we got another issue here. I wonder if it's the board. All right, to be continued, I got to clean up, get ready to go on the road on Monday. More later.